Hello everyone. Welcome to Literary Animator, a place where you study, we animate. Before we start, I want to inform you all that this video is explained in English. If you guys need Hindi explanation, please let me know. I will create a video in Hindi as soon as possible. Let us move on to the poem. Eunice D. Souza was a novelist, literary critic, and poet who wrote in English. Among her prominent poetry collections are Women in Dutch Painting, 1988, Ways of Belonging, 1990, and others. Moving on to the line-by-line -line explanation of the poem. In every Catholic home there's a picture of Christ holding his bleeding heart in his hand. I used to think, or... The poem Bequest opens with a concept that is comparable to the overall theme of the poem, Self-Sacrifice. D. Souza depicts Christ as a cliché, cradling his wounded heart in his palm. There are two facades in this shot. For starters, it is a religious representation of Christ's death. On the other hand, it depicts the speaker's bleeding heart as a result of patriarchal rules. When the speaker was a child, she was disgusted and disturbed at seeing the bloodied heart of Christ. The term I expresses this contempt. The situational irony of the poem is that as she grows older, she becomes accustomed to the figuratively bleeding side of patriarchy. The only person with whom I have not exchanged confidences, is my hairdresser. The poet's interpretation of this image of Christ is obvious in the second stanza. She sees it as a symbol of honesty and openness. Holding one's heart out to someone is a representation of being genuine to oneself and others. It indicates that Christ displays his actual feelings to the world. This image inspired the speaker's thought. As a result, she remained faithful to everyone. She has no qualms about showing her genuine self to people. There is, however, one exception. The only person with whom she has not traded confidences, according to the speaker, is her hairdresser. The poet employs two poetic techniques in this stanza. One is sarcasm, while the other is an anticlimax. The concept of a hairdresser is surprising since readers anticipated something else. In this way, the poet portrays the type of girl she was. Some recommend stern standards. Others say float along. He says, take it as it comes. Meaning, of course, as he hands it out. But society didn't let her be herself. Some advocated adhering to the stern standards of traditional society. The phrase stern refers to patriarchy's unyielding and authoritarian nature. Some of them advised her to float with the other women. The poet utilizes a metaphor for flowing downstream in this sentence. As a result, the stream represents patriarchal ideals. To be a part of this culture, she must float along, without knowing where the current would take her. The lines that follow allude to Christ's words. Christ urged humanity in his testament to accept whatever comes their way. They must always be prepared for whatever the Creator delivers them, whether good or unpleasant. Furthermore, the speaker stresses the fact by adding the word of course. In these lines, it appears that the poet is portraying Christ as a symbol of patriarchy. I wish I could be a wise woman, smiling endlessly, vacuously, like a plastic flower, saying, Child, learn from me. In the fourth verse of Bequest, the speaker proclaims her ambition to be a wise woman. From the perspective of society, who is a wise woman? A wise lady is one who knows simply the art of smiling and not the skill of being self-satisfied. 
She is wise because she has made the intentional decision to accept the standards without inquiry. Everyone knows what would have happened to her otherwise. The speaker's smile now has a phony quality to it. Whether her heart is full of joy or not, she must maintain her smile in order to conceal her old mental scars. In the following lines, the poet used a simile to contrast two dissimilar notions, a fake flower and the speaker's grin. An artificial flower is a copy of reality, devoid of life's spontaneity. Similarly, the speaker is now bereft of the emotions that define a human being. It's time to perform an act of charity, to myself, bequeath the heart, like a spare kidney, preferably to an enemy. In the last words of bequest, D. Souza's speaker cynically declares that she would execute a act of charity in the same way that Christ accepted martyrdom for the sake of humanity. However, the speaker is making a sacrifice not for others, but to redeem herself from her mental anguish. She leaves her heart behind. She compares her heart to a spare kidney using an analogy. In this way, she reduces the importance of the body's most vital organ to a lesser one. It's crucial to understand what the term heart means. It is used as an emotional metonym. Eunice speaker attempts to sacrifice her heart in order to alleviate herself of the incessant suffering it brings. The longer it stays in her body, the more discomfort she will experience. It will continue to remind her of her emotional anguish as a woman in a patriarchal culture. A lady does not suffer because of what others say about her. She suffers the most as a result of what her loved ones say. As a result, the speaker would rather entrust her heart to an enemy than a friend. Thank you everyone. I hope you all liked my explanation. See you in next video.